Welcome back to the TCM YouTube channel where we are continuing our 2023 previews for the county season and next up we're heading to the northeast and to Durham and to a place which has gone through quite a lot of hardship in cricket in the past few years but it feels like they're certainly rebuilding and joining us for this one is regular TCM contributor, journalist and commentator Rob Rush. Rob, how are you first of all? You went to Durham's Media Day yesterday. I wonder if you can set the scene, set the context for us. What's going on in the northeast at the moment? A lot of positivity, um, which is something, as you mentioned, you know, Durham have uh, not exactly been positivity and Durham cricket don't exactly mix well over the last four or five years um, with the financial issues, on field performances. Um, but yeah, when uh, we're recording this Thursday, I went to Media Day on Wednesday, and there's a it's completely different. Like I didn't go to Media Day last year, but. There is a there was a sense of real positivity. You know, they've got some new signings in. Their new head coach Ryan Campbell. Um, from speaking to him for the best part of half an hour, um, you know, he he seems like he he knows what he's doing. He's had great success with Holland in the past. So a really shrewd appointment by um, Marcus North and everyone and involved in the board with Durham. Um, there's some stuff off the record as well that I can't really say, but. There is a general sense of positivity and from speaking to Scott Borthwick, Matthew Potts, um, you know, and kind of everyone else that was just around there at Media Day, you know, everyone was really, it was really uplifting. And at times last year with Durham, you saw on the field, they weren't having to go at each other, but they, it wasn't camaraderie at some points. It felt like there had been a breakdown. And obviously, James Franklin left before the end of the season and... It, that falls in some of the off 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 the record stuff. Um, Neil Colleen is left to take up a role with England. So there's a bit of change in the coaching staff, but overall there is a real sense of positivity. And as a as a, a, a as a self adopted kind of yeah, you're like an adopted Durham fan, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I have, to, I, have, I have to be being up in the northeast. Um, but yeah, there's a real sense of excitement, and there's real there's real there are many reasons to be positive for this season. Absolutely. And you've mentioned loads of things there, and I'm sure we'll get into them in uh, in a lot of depth. So as we mentioned last year, not a great uh, season for them. Eighth in the Vitality Blast, sixth in Division 2, and finishing rock bottom of Group A in the One Day Cup. Do you think they're going to go into 2023 knowing they can improve on, on, on a disappointing season last year? Well, if they're going to back up their words from yesterday, yes, they will be. Um, you know, Ollie Robinson, who's just joined permanently from Kent, has said... You know, there's no reason why this group can't be competing on all three fronts. Um, that's how, you know, that's how confident these guys are. And that's testament to Campbell and what he's done in only four months as head coach. I and mean, they've only just come back off pre-season last week in Zimbabwe. So, um, you know, speaking to Campbell, he said that they want to be, they want to get out the group. They want to get out the group in, I think it was both tournaments. They want to get out the group. They want to get on a white ball run because... Uh, speaking to Martin Emerson, who's covered Durham for BBC North East, for BBC Newcastle, sorry, for God knows how many years. Um, you know, the T20 cricket has been appalling over the last four or five years. They obviously had a decent run in the One Day Cup a few years ago, losing to Morgan in the final. But apart from that, um, you know, I, I, what, I commentated on them versus Leicester in their final One Day game, and it was just atrocious. They were like 23 for five at some point. So... You know, they've, they've definitely identified their weaknesses in that respect. Um, they've got players in Baz de Lerda, who's had a really good international career with Holland and who they're eyeing up to force on Red Bull cricket as well. Um, you know, Brandon Glover, they've really identified their weaknesses. And the main thing they've spoken about is they wanted to target their depth this year. Um, last year, towards the back end of the season, you had Stanley McElindon, Tom McIntosh, pretty much being forced to carry the load for, you know, senior players were injured. England call-ups didn't help, you know, Pops being away for the majority of the season, uh, Bryden Cass struggling with injury, but then when he was fit, he was away with England, you know, Alex Lee's being taken away from them. So they really targeted their depth over the winter. Uh, losing Chris Rushworth is a huge blow, but they are confident that they've strengthened enough in the fast bowling department. So they look, they look to be a completely different outfit from last season and, you know, they're looking to be really competitive on all three fronts. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see how it goes. And you mentioned there, of course, the loss of Chris Rushworth, which is a big thing. But you also mentioned how uh, they're, they're, they're sort of rebuilding there. Now, I look at the pace attack on on 
for the county championship on paper. And uh, if the England call-ups provide, you know, you've got people like Brad and Cars, Matthew Potts, potentially Mark Wood uh, and Ben Stokes thrown in there as well, maybe for the start of the county championship. That seems to me, uh, adding in, you know, the existing players, that seems like an unstoppable uh, pace attack. Would you say uh, bowling-wise, especially in the county championship, this is where Durham is going to have strength in, especially when all players are available? 100%. 100%. I mean, just to clarify, Campbell has said that he does not expect Ben Stokes or Mark Wood to be available at any point for Durham this season, which is a shame because, um, you know, last season we had the uh, infamous, what did he, Stokes smack that spinner for 34 off and over? Um, <laughs> you know, that was a nice warm up. It was just before the test, before the test, he was giving warm up games. Uh, Campbell has said that he's kind of put him and Wood to one side of, we're not really going to expect to see them at all, but they will welcome them with open arms, of course, if they're around. You mentioned there, um, you know, Potts and Cast, kind of the immediate guys you look to because they've got international experience. Cast is is not the strongest in Red Bull, but he still should be good enough to, you know, pick up a fair few wickets and dip to touch wood. He can stay fit um, because he has struggled with injuries in the last few years. Ben Rain is a very experienced operator at Div 2 level. Uh, Me and uh, Potts joked yesterday that um, he should be in the test squad because he got Marnus Labuschagne out last (laughs) season. Um, so whenever Stokesy comes back in, uh, Potsy is always saying to uh, the fast bowling group, always saying to Stokes, you need to get Ben Rain back in the, you need to get Ben Rain in the squad. Um, but yeah, I think the thing that you mentioned, yes, the pace bowling is where they should hold a significant advantage over most of Division Two. But I think I alluded to it in my last bit, the depth that they have this year. You know, Stanley McAlinden, who might not see a lot of cricket this year, but that exposure he got last year as a 17, 18 year old uh, playing first team cricket. And he went away with the young Lions, the under 19s. He's played with them. And something Marcus North said that the young guys being away with the young Lions program. And, you know, it's not to say they're going to place huge expectations on them, but just the fact that, you know, they're not going to be like other youngsters that maybe haven't had that exposure yet. These guys are going to come into the season knowing that there's opportunity there will be opportunities for them to play. They may be few and far between, but they will they are going to get them and they want to draw on their experience and hopefully if things fall right their way, you know, they can have Bryden Cast in the attack with them to help lead them. You know, Ben Rain's gonna to have to step up again and be probably I'm not, I wouldn't say the leader of the attack because that's probably going to be Matthew Potts for when he's around. But you know, when those call ups do come, Potts should be in and around the group, should be around the England group. So Ben Rain will have to step up then and be a leader for them. So yeah, I think this is a this is a very strong uh, pace bowling group for Durham this year, and they're definitely trying to use it as a springboard to get them out of Div Two. Absolutely, and uh, on paper, hopefully they should um, do that. Uh, obviously, big signing Ollie Robinson from Kent. Uh, what do you think impact wise he's going to have? Because it seems like obviously he went on loan to Durham uh, last season. It seems like he loves uh, being around the Durham side and being there. Uh, what impact do you think he's going to have? A player who is blossoming, coming into his own. I think it's fair to say. Uh, what impact do you think he's going to have? Absolutely monumental, you know, to have a... Do you think this is a guy who's taken a step down from Div 1 cricket? You know, um, and the thing he said to me yesterday was he didn't like being messed around at Kent. He didn't like being told one week he's opening, next week he's batting seven, some weeks he has the gloves, some weeks he doesn't have the gloves. Whereas he's now stepping into a Durham team where you ask anyone, he is the number one wicketkeeper batter, you know, all three formats, you know, he's the guy that they're going to go to. So I think he's going to have a huge, um, he's going to have a huge impact. I mean, last year, just trying to think off the top of my head, they had to get Chris Benjamin on loan for the last two games of the county season from Warwickshire. Uh, Ned Eckersley uh, left the club by mutual consent after some stuff behind the scenes. Tom McIntosh did have a Solid. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure how much you really want from a 19, 20 year old wicketkeeper taking his first steps into professional cricket, kind of because he's being forced to do it. You know, they had no one else. They had no one else to do it. So, you know, I think that was something that they really, really targeted. And as soon as Ollie, you know, from speaking to him yesterday, the T20 stint went really well in terms of how he fitted in with the group. Ne- the stats won't necessarily back it up uh, because Durham and T20 cricket were shambolic last year. But how he fits in with the group, how he fits in with the players, how he fits in with uh, the new coaching staff now after speaking to him about pre-season as well. You know, I think it's a match made in heaven 
uh, for these two uh, to kind of continue their partnership. And I think Oli is going to have a really successful year this year, knowing that he's going to be the number one wicketkeeper. He's going to be in a settled role this year. They're not going to move him around up and down the order. And the fact that this is a guy who has scored centuries and did one, you know, that brings a lot of experience. And when you look at Durham's top five, it provi- it should hopefully provide a very good platform for them to go and win games this year. And someone else who's in the top five is Alex Lees. Obviously, we heard a lot about him last summer with the England call-up and stuff like that. Do you think this uh, season is an opportunity for him to just consolidate, get back to do what he's doing best, and then England hopes down the line, not really thinking about that and just do what he can for Durham? Because obviously, you know, England call-up is a big thing. But do you think that'll be on his mind at all? Or do you think he'll be solely focused on Durham this season? Based on what other people said to me yesterday, I don't think England call-up was on his mind at the minute. You know, speaking to Ollie Robinson, uh, even Matthew Potts, um, you know, those they, they aren't thinking of England call-ups. They're thinking, or not immediately, um, they're thinking, first and foremost, we want to win games for Durham. And the moment, I think Ollie said to me, the moment you look too far ahead is when you start losing sight of what's important. So uh, Lees has now got the responsibility this year of being the white ball captain and Campbell uh, said that actually, if you look at Lees' stats, he is a very good white ball player, but people just don't take a lot of notice of him in the white ball game. So I think it will be good for him to get back just to playing a in cricket that is less is of a less demand than test cricket because you know test cricket you're under the microscope all the time and he found that out pretty harshly last year uh, or well over the last sort of 18 months that he was in the side so i think it will be good for him you know he's got a he'll be building a partnership with michael jones at the top as openers this year uh jones had a breakout season last season for durham in all three formats probably should have cleaned up the awards at uh, player of the season if it wasn't for pots um, so yeah, I think Lee's, it's a big opportunity for him to come back and really set the platform and just remind to everyone what he's about. But ultimately, if what, if what the other players have said who are maybe in and running in contention is true, then I think Lee's will just be focusing on Durham for the, for the immediate future. And I imagine that's what England would have said to him as well. I didn't get to speak to him yesterday, but I can imagine that's what would have been said to him over the, over the winter and as, as time progresses. But who knows? We'll see what happens with England. Anything can happen. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely one to keep an eye on then. Uh, So you mentioned earlier about, you know, new new talent coming into Durham and in terms of younger players who are coming through the ranks, I believe they signed uh, six different rookie deals uh, for um, new players to come in. How good is it for Durham to have that youth coming through, homegrown talent, getting to play with the experience of like Ollie Robinson, Matthew Parks, Bryden Cars, etc, etc. And what impact do you think these young players will have on this uh, Durham side? I think it's huge. You know, you never want to lose players of a young age that have a lot of potential and that you can help them grow. I mean, I was speaking to Marcus North yesterday and he uh, kind of one of the things I pointed out was up until last summer, apart from Stokes and Wood, Durham had kind of been ignored by the England on a national level. Kind of, you know, you had players from Hampshire, Lancashire, Yorkshire, Surrey, Essex. Durham kind of really just fell by the wayside a little bit up until last summer when Ben Stokes took over the captaincy for the test team and we all know what's happened since. So I think the you know, you mentioned that there are six guys. I can't remember all of them off the top of my head, but you know, I know Stanley McInnen, I think, is one, Tom McIntosh is another, and the all of the they're all kind of coming through the same age group in the academy. I think it's huge. Um, you know, they get to continue their development. Uh, North is particularly passionate about the grassroots cricket in Durham and how they have very good pathways into first team cricket. And it might be that some of these guys don't get to play until the one day cup later this year, you know, when the hundred is taking uh, place and you know Ben Rain will be gone, Matthew Potts will be gone. You know there's chances for Jones and Robinson to potentially earn deals. So yeah, I think this group, you know, Campbell also said it as well. It's going to be a shootout for some places, and that's just that's everyone that could be involved. You know, I know uh, McAlinden has struggled with injuries in preseason, but you know Campbell didn't rule out him playing in the first game of the season. Um, you know, against I think they're down at I think they're down at Sussex, so. You know, it's good to have the competition for places. And I think it also speaks to the culture that is now being set at Durham, that no matter who you are, what your name is, what reputation you have, if you're not if you're go- if you're not going to keep putting in the work and you're not going to keep working hard to succeed, they will pick people, they will pick players who will do that regardless of their age. So 
I think it will be huge. And, you know, people like McIntosh and McLennan were thrown into the fire last year. You know, Ben McKinney, Jonathan Bush, and all those guys were kind of... It's, there's never an ideal scenario to throw young players into, but that Durham side last year was the epitome of the uh, the the worst situation to drop those guys into. So hopefully this year things can run more smoothly and we can get a better look at them. Um, you know, we don't want to see just glimpses this year. We want to see... You know, Campbell said, we don't want to just see glimpses. We want to see their full potential. We want to see them, you know, as a batter, he wants everyone averaging in the 40s. He wants them to be doing that. And as a bowler, he needs to take wickets. So, yeah, th- their times will come. Some might come sooner than others. But, um, you know, I think we'll see all of them at some point during the season. And hopefully they can put their best foot forward. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's turn then to overseas players and people they've got in. Now, David Beddingham, he's been with uh, Durham since 2020, quite well established within the side, so I'm not really bothered about him. What I want to talk about is uh, Tristan Stubbs, because that, for the Vitality Blast, is going to be an absolutely stellar signing. What impact do you think he's going to have on, on this Durham side? Sky's the limit. Sky is the limit for it. You know, Stubbs comes with a huge reputation. Um, you know, there's someone that Durham had followed for a while and were definitely had interest in as soon as. I think what's also key here is that the board and Mark North have backed Ryan Campbell. Campbell has said, you know, these are the sorts of players we need to get in and they have provided the resources to go get them. And I think Stubbs, you know, they tried, they got AJ Tay, they got AJ Tai last year. He was very hit and miss in terms of their overseas player for the T20s. Um, sometimes he'd be good, but sometimes he'd be terrible. So I think with Stubbs, they're looking for a bit more consistency, uh, you know, uh, moving away from it as well. Baz Galeida, as I mentioned earlier, he's got a reputation that speaks for itself with Holland in white ball cricket. So I think they were very smart in their recruitment this year. You know, Marcus North spoke very passionately about they're very happy with how they've recruited and they're very, they're very positive about what these new signings can do. And I think Stubbs will raise both the floor of this group and the ceiling of this group by ex- extraordinary amounts. So, yeah, watch him now struggle and all this <laughs> now turn to be completely, you know, rubbish. But I think on paper, it's a very, very good signing. Um, it it identifies and it solves a, a, an area of need that Durham had. And I think it's a better fit than other overseas signings have been. So I think it, I think it was a very positive addition. It'll be horrible if we put the commentator's curse on him now. Um, but we shall see. It'll be great to see how he uh, goes along. I want to broaden this out a bit more. And you've been talking a lot about the role of Ryan Campbell as new head coach and the role of Marcus North as well. So I wonder, from your perspective, you're following Durham for a long term. Uh, do you feel this project that Marcus North has been building in the past few years is now finally coming to fruition? And do you think this season is that time where we're going to see Durham get back to challenging for 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 titles and for um for you know uh, trophies? I think this year might be a year too early. I mean, it's an awful lot to ask of Ryan Campbell. Yes, he has a brilliant reputation, and everything I heard yesterday. As a as as proper Durham fans who weren't there, it's pretty much everything you could have wanted to hear from your new head coach. You know, there was no, there's no, they're not going to play for draws this year. They're they're doing away with that concept. You know, last year, whether it was the square at Durham or how they played, you know, again, Scott Borthwick told me some nice stuff off the record um, that I can't really say. But there was there were restrictions last year on how the group could play. Campbell has removed those this year. There, there are no restrictions on this group. They are here to win games of cricket, as it should be, as we've seen with the England Test side, as you see with winners of the titles. You know, Ollie Robinson spoke to this as well. You don't win game, you don't win titles by drawing games. You win titles by winning games. So I think you're going to see a big step forward this year from Durham. You know, I don't expect them to be languishing down the bottom of all three tables this year. Do I think they can compete for titles? I mean, Div 2, I'd say they're one of the favourites um, to definitely be promotion, to definitely be in a promotion fight. I think the other two, you're going to have to, you might have this season, it's not going to be a test run, but it's going to be, you're going to have bumps in the road. You might see them pick up some really good wins, but then you might see them pick up some really bad losses. And I think, as I mentioned right at the top of this, it's a lot to ask of a new head coach, a new coaching staff with all these new players to get immediate success. Now, obviously, if they do it, 
Ryan Campbell is going to be a wizard in, in how he's managed it. Um, so I think we'll see them back up towards the right end of the table this year. I think, you know, top half is definitely attainable and should be the bare minimum for this group. And if everything falls their way, if everything falls into their lap, then yeah, the sky's the limit for them. But I think if you're going to be a realist here, which I'm trying to be, then I think top half of the table, maybe you get some push in a one-day cup when all the other counties are affected by 100 call-ups and Durham should realistically be keeping most of their squad together for the 100. So, yeah, I think top half of the table and then maybe a trophy push on one front. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, maybe underdogs in the white ball uh, tournaments, but as you say, should be uh, challenging in Division 2. Um, let's turn now to your one to watch. We keep asking our contributors in this to pick out one player who they think uh, county fans across the UK should be looking out for uh, this season. Who are you going to go for and why? Michael Jones. At the top of the order in both formats for in both red and white ball uh, for Durham this year. As I mentioned, he had a breakout season last year. I think he's I think he's in a really good position to back it up this year. Went away with Scotland over the winter. He's got himself into the national setup there, and I think you know it's kind of the way that Campbell wants his side to play. I think it's going to suit Michael Jones down to the ground. Um, you know, he did, wasn't really much of a white ball player before last year, but because of injuries and whatnot, he was forced to be. And then he actually found out he's pretty, he's pretty decent at it. So. I think, as I mentioned earlier, him and Alex Lees are probably going to be the opening four. They're going to be the opening pair for all three formats. So they're going to have a lot of time, fingers crossed, to build that relationship, build that connection. And I think it just it's just the way Durham are going to play this year is going to suit Jones down to the ground. Um, I mean, if you're going to force me for someone younger, then I would look for Stanley McAlinden to really kick on from last year. Hopefully he can put the injury issues behind him. But in terms of ones that I think are going to have a bigger input on things. Michael Jones, especially now that Sean Dixon uh, is left for Somerset, you know, there is, he, they're going to be, as I said, him and Lee's are going to are slotted in as openers. So they're going to have time to build that connection, build that rapport. And I think it will bounce off really well on Jones. I think it, everything, everything is set up for him to do really well this year. Yeah, definitely. Then one to watch for everyone. And I wouldn't have picked him out. So that's uh, good uh, to know. Let's pin you down even more now. It's time to get the predictions in and lock in where you think Durham are going to uh, finish in each tournament. We'll start off then with Division 2. You said challenging for promotion. Do you think Durham will get promoted this year? I think they will just miss out. Um. Judging on what I heard yesterday, uh, from especially from uh, you know, kind of the ambitions that players have, they all want to get up there. They all want to be back up in Division One, and there was talk just to end the winning Division One in the next five years. They want that. That is a that's a long term goal for them. But I think this year, as I mentioned, new coaching staff. It's going to take a while for things to gel. Yes, you will have Matthew Potts available for probably the first seven or so games. After that, anyone's guess if he's available or not. Uh, Bryden cast, but when the white ball cricket starts rolling around, you know, he'll be away with the 100. Um, and he might be in some England squads before then that might impact his availability. So that will take a little bit of a hit. The batting wise, they do seem to have a set top five in terms of Lees, Jones. Looks like Scott Borthwick's going to bat at three this year, bedding him at four, and then Ollie Robinson will come in at around number five. That seems to be the way that, you know, if you're going to ask me for my top, their top five, that's what I would say. It's a solid platform, but too many times last year, they lost clusters of wickets. They didn't get a platform set. So I think I think third place for them this year. Um, we'll wait and see if the ECB conduct, concoct any more charges against them to try and put them in the dirt even more. But um, yeah, I think they'll be challenging for promotion. I think they'll they'll be in those spots for the mass majority of the season but I think it's my, I think it's asking a little bit much too soon but if they, if you can have they can have that for this first season then that puts them in even better stead for next year yeah and just quickly then let's turn to the white ball competitions uh, and the vitality blast obviously eighth last year not great uh definitely you think you can see improvement but I'll push you here will they make it to the knockouts yes or no I'm going to go yes on both fronts. I think um, they're going to have a little bit more stability. They've spoken about, you know, Ollie Robinson is going to be used in a specific way in the T20 competition. 
um, which I think is going to suit him down to the ground. Um, the white, I think, as we mentioned, the uh, with the hundred being on the same time as the one day cup, Durham are going to have most of their squad together for that one day cup. So they're going to have to keep, they're going to be able to keep that consistency, and they're not going to be as affected by the call ups as any other counties. Um, you know, you might like Leicestershire, Northamptonshire might be the only ones that Glamorgan as well that might have lesser call ups, but they still should have a better squad than them on paper and should be able to adapt to the conditions on the on any given day. So I will I'm predicting they're gonna get out of the group stages in both white ball tournaments. Um, you know, Baz the leader being around is going to be huge for them. He's going to be able to take on a huge leadership role for them and kind of be the follow me guys type of leader and drag them, you know, I he's got the ability to drag them out in certain scenarios that if they get themselves into you know, you would think that you would think they'd be dead in the water. So, I'd say out, out of the group stages in both competitions, I don't think they get to finals day. I think the the strength in you know your own county, Lancashire. If Josh Butler is somehow available, if, 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 if Josh Butler is somehow available, then Lancashire become immediate favourites in my book. You have the reigning T Twenty Bars champions in Hampshire. Who are oh, like you had team. to bring it up, didn't you? You had to bring it up. <laughs> um, Hampshire have retained their overseas, and you know other other teams have also improved their T Twenty squads. So, I think again, probably putting on a trying to get to finals day might be a bit too far for them. And then in the one day cup, I think quarterfinals. I think they get to the quarterfinals, but that lack of that the se- last season not having much competitive cricket in terms of stuff to play for I think will will come back to haunt them but as I as I'll overall say with this coaching group anything can happen you know I firmly believe that this year so while my predictions are of that of a realist it's not insane to say to Durham fans that you can dream you can you can dream a bit this year you know you aren't going to be sitting at the bottom of the table again this year I can guarantee you that yeah and dreaming is a nice way uh, to end this rob thank you very much indeed for joining us we're progressing nicely with these county previews number 10 we're into double uh, digits eight more to come for you if you enjoyed this please do like and subscribe and we will see you in the next one